column in there that you can add in. But unfortunately, it also messes up a few things that Windows Explorer actually got right. <laughs> so there's still there's still nothing that gets all of them right. Does anybody use any other um, file manager? No, I use an older file manager, but it doesn't have the color bit depth either. Well, it's not the color bit depth. It's the, it's the audio bit depth. Audio. Oh, yeah. I use one called Explorer++, Plus Plus, but I couldn't find that attribute that you were looking for. Okay. Yeah, I asked um, ask Leo, Leo Notenboom, about it, and he said he uses um, uh, Explorer 2. And he said it had the bit depth. So I tried it. And yeah, it had the bit depth only for video, for pictures, which is exactly the same as Windows Explorer. So it wasn't any wasn't any good. So I went tracking down in some of the uh, audio um, audio file forums, and uh, they were using um, this XY Plorer, which seems to to work in in that case, but doesn't in others. I venture to say, Steve, that there are very, very, very few people that actually use either of the things that you're looking for. <laughs> it, it yeah, for begin, audio or video. Yeah, I've begun to uh, realize that. <laughs> but it does make a big difference, though, when you can hear 24-bit audio if you've got the hardware to play it. That's why most people don't bother, because they don't have the hardware for it. Well, you go into your settings and you can try to make the change. It either works or it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, but if you've got the hardware, if you don't have the hardware for it, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, the only the only reason I wanted to call them was so that I didn't have to go um, right clicking on the properties to see whether it was a 24 or a 16. If you had a column, you can sort them that way. So well, I mean, welcome. To Windows Explorer, it's got columns in there that are so obscure that you, you know, maybe one person on the planet would ever use the darn things. But yet something, you know, is maybe not it's, as wide. It's only used important. As it's only important for anyone if that's what they're looking for. If you're not looking yeah. for it, it's not important. <laughs> that's yeah. basically what it comes out to. This is important to you because it's something that you're interested in. If you're yeah. not interested in it or you don't use it, then it becomes non-important. And how many people are using the uh, extra columns that are available even in Windows Explorer, let alone know that they exist and they could turn them on and off? Correct. Well, I do all the time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, okay, you're one person. So right. do I. Population. Yep. Uh, so do I. I use them all the time. But the majority yeah, I, of the users do not. It's they don't even the know default. about them. Right. Default is default, and that's what get, gets used. That's right. Yeah, that's why we're but, stuck with Windows and Microsoft. Mm. Oh, you have a choice. Not really. Not if what you're doing for work only works in windows you're pretty much pretty much stuck with it uh good morning i just want to let everyone know that the meeting will start uh in about five minutes we're sort of sitting around having a social chat uh if um if anyone has a uh, under a five minute question or concern or wants to say something, but we do have to get the meeting started right on time because we have a big, big meeting today. So we need to get through it. So uh, if anyone has a, a three minute question, then please. Uh, okay, I've got one one thing to say. You remember we were talking about the um, Amazon uh, warehouse deals, mm -hmm. that uh, SSD drive that I got through the warehouse deals and managed to get 10 bucks off it and I ended up getting for like a hundred and 110 or something. Well, now they've got it down to 89 bucks. 
<laughs> Prices do fluctuate. Yeah. Don't forget to put in the premier link. Yes, I'll do that, Murray. Yes, indeed, I will. I will indeed. Yeah, the prices fluctuate particularly on the, and in fact, at Amazon, the volume of Amazon has gone down lately. And so the, um, the I see some of their prices falling. Some of the stuff that I buy on a regular basis has gone down in price. The other, the other thing that was interesting, um, my uh, Miss A taught, I don't know, did I tell you guys this last time? I was walking in the house and they said, Miss A said to me, hey, do you want to buy some coffee? <laughs> I said, I said, oh, really? And they said, yeah, you haven't bought your Tim Hortons bean coffee for a while. We'll sell it to you for $19.95 for a two-pound bag. And I paid normally $25. So I thought, that's a good deal. So if it starts talking to you, you might get a good deal. Carl, do you have a one-minute question? I'll try to make it 30 seconds. We can answer it later. When okay. I was signing up for an APUG meeting, at the end, it says uh, save address to uh, authenticator. I don't need an answer now, but I don't know what that means. Save address. To, oh, probably what? a Google authenticator. They're probably talking about two-factor. Oh, yeah. Did you sign up for two-factor authentication? Well, I, I don't know. I said yes to it. I don't know what I did. Let's do that in the Q&A. That's a good one, Carl, for yeah. the Q&A, all right? Remind all us right. in the Q&A, okay? That's a good one for the Q&A. Well, wait, wait a minute. I can't remind you because I won't remember. That's why I asked it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure there's uh, 62 people here. Someone will remember in, 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 uh, in the meeting, okay? All right. Good question, though. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so um, if so if you you miss a maybe talk to you and say hey <laughs> and the prices might be really good so um i thought that was cute my wife coughed and miss a asked whether or not she was okay oh really yep oh that's cool <laughs> there you go so Well, I think we're going to start one minute early today so that we get through. Let me just um, going to mute everybody. Share my screen. Good morning or afternoon or wherever you are. This is uh, Tech for Senior. This is episode 160. And it is, of course, April the 24th. Uh, it is a gorgeous sunny day in Comox, British Columbia, where I am. I'm Ron Brown, and I'll be your host today. Next week, Huey will be your host. So we he's uh, he's he's busily taking notes as we go along here. <laughs> Anyway, welcome. This is uh, our show. We'll be, we'll be with you for uh, for about the next hour. We have um, a a great uh, a great show for you today. Uh, if you are out in the audience, we do appreciate you coming and thank you. If you are uh, watching this uh, on a uh, you as a YouTube replay, uh, thanks so much. If you are watching this as a YouTube short, just click the link and it'll take you right to the show. Our show is, of course, uh, recorded and is available uh, on our website. It's www.techforsenior.com. 
uh, and that'll take you right to our YouTube channel. Today on the show, we have uh, a big show for you today. Uh, we, of course, have uh, our introduction, which I'm doing now. And then, of course, Bob is going to talk about security news update and uh, cyber spring cleaning. Should be interesting. We're then going to go uh, and um, we'll talk a little bit about this, but Huey's going to show us how to transcribe a video file. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And I'm going to do part two of supercharging your uh, Gmail. Uh, Huey's then going to talk about uh, AI in 2023. And then uh, Ray is in, under the knife again today. So I'll be doing his music outro and playing it for him. He's recorded it. We then have, of course, our Q&A, which is our question and answer period. And we'll answer all your questions. And then at half past the hour, we will have our premiere service for you. And uh, Dewey, not Huey, but Dewey Clues will be talking about giving a summary of EV batteries. We've already talked about that, but this is a good summary for you. Uh, Bill James, of course, is going to do this time. You know, he's a man of many talents, so he's doing, uh, he's doing Windows tips today. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about cardiac monitoring with your smartwatch. So there's, uh, so there's something for everybody, and that will be in the uh, premiere, um, premiere video at, um, at half past the hour. And I'll be putting the link in the, in the show. But of course, the link is uh, in our uh, newsletter on Saturday. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to our newsletter, please do. It comes out twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturday. So, uh, uh, and you can do that, of course, at www.techforsenior.com. So today we have, um, let's see, we have, uh, Huey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Getting ready for uh, learning Chromebooks later That's this right. week. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we do learning Chromebooks on Thursday, right? And I'm trying to keep up with this AI stuff, and it, they keep throwing more and more at me. So, <laughs> Yeah, and we also, we, I didn't mention that we do our Thursday show, which, of course, is uh, technology news. So if you haven't... Yep. Uh, haven't seen our Thursday show, please come and listen. But there's, the, there's one little secret we need to tell you. It's not a Zoom meeting, right? So we always get people logging into our Zoom account, but it's not a Zoom meeting. You, uh, It's broadcast to our Facebook page and to our YouTube channel. And again, the link in our www.techforsenior.com will be there. And it's um, and just click that link and it'll take you right there. Bob, how the heck are you doing? Just fine. Another nice day. Uh, hopefully, we're going to start getting some evenings where it doesn't go to frost anymore. Mm -hmm. Alice bought a tomato plant that I had to bring it in almost every night. That's not good. I don't like <laughs> tomato plants in the house. <laughs> and Bill James, are you? Uh, you're a busy guy. Thank you. Well, yeah, getting ready for um, Wednesday's big Windows versus Mac comparison presentation right. for I see uh, you're on a Mac again today. I am. Are you are you gonna are you going to the dark side totally or what? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> All right. And Mike Ungerman, you've got sort of not a bit of a frown, not quite a big smile. It must be raining in Florida, right? Going to be, yes. But the electricity in Florida isn't that expensive. Only 13 cents a kilowatt hour. All right. And you're making your own anyway. So what what the heck, right? <laughs> I've right. already sent it to them. They can send it back now. <laughs> All right. Bob, let's get rolling. Uh, do you want to get rolling with your security update? Why not? Let's get started. Here is my security news roundup for the week ending April 21st, 2023. Cisco and VMware release security updates to patch critical flaws in products. Cisco and VMware have released security updates to address critical security flaws in their products. That I don't think that's the right date. Do you? Hold on a second.
Cisco, Cisco is a networking company. I did work for them. Yeah, I got the wrong. And I don't know where it is. Oh, boy. Do you want to play the first one? Do you want to play your um, spring gonna, cleaning first while you're doing that? I'm going to have to. Labor Spring Cleaning. My thanks to Emma McGowan for her excellent article on this topic. You'll find her article at the link listed. From daily routines to monthly rituals, here's to your cyber health. With any spring cleaning project, a checklist can help you remember all the essential tasks for organizing, decluttering, and maintaining your physical home. The same is needed to keep your digital home spotless and secure. Clean all devices. Just like objects and surfaces throughout your home, your digital devices are also prone to collecting germs, crumbs, and dust. Use a microfiber cloth to wipe away smudges and disinfect your phone, laptops, and tablets. Organize critical files. Leverage a digital organization system to help organize your critical files and avoid an excess of duplicate documents from cluttering your desktop. Create label folders to manage these files for quick and easy access when needed. Backup essential files. Export all important files to an external hard drive or cloud storage. Knowing that your data is backed up provides much needed security and peace of mind in your digital home. Clear out inboxes. Keep your email clutter free by unsubscribing from e newsletters and deleting old emails. A backlog of unread or partially read emails can cause personal and private information to get buried and become accessible to hackers. Practice password hygiene. A good password is like the key to your digital home that protects you from cyber threats. Routinely updating passwords and creating unique combinations containing upper and lower case letters, numbers, and symbols reduces the risk of hack credentials. Check security settings. Make sure your online accounts have the most up-to-date privacy settings to protect against potential cyber threats. Review your social media and email profiles and manually adjust the privacy settings to avoid sharing information you don't want accessed or published online. Update all devices. Stay on top of the latest features that protect data, improve performance, and patch security flaws on your devices. As mentioned in maintaining your digital home, take a moment to check that you have enabled automatic software updates to defend against potential threats and maintain a tidy digital home. Install antivirus software. Secure your digital home with Avast Antivirus. I personally have used their free version since 2003. Why not install it on your system today? Just follow the link listed. Tidy up social media. Go through your social media accounts, such as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and delete, unfollow, and unfriend 
social media bots, or people you no longer interact with. Throw out digital trash. Toss out digital clutter as you would junk from your garage. As mentioned in decluttering your digital home, wipe out all existing data and follow all recycling guidelines when discarding your digital devices. These are must-dos to achieve optimum cyber health, so please bookmark this video to keep it handy. Happy year-around cyber cleaning! Stay safe, stay secure. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye and thanks for watching and listening. Bob, we don't have any audio. Oh, come on. Here is my security news roundup got it, got it. for the week ending April 21st, 2023. Cisco and VMware release security updates to patch critical flaws in products. Cisco and VMware have released security updates to address critical security flaws in their products that could be exploited by malicious actors to execute arbitrary code on affected systems. A successful exploit could allow the attacker to execute arbitrary commands as NT authority system on the underlying operating system of an affected device, Cisco said in an advisory released on April 19, 2023. Patches have been made available on versions 1.11.3, with Cisco crediting an unnamed external researcher for reporting the two issues. Read more at thehackernews.com. American Bar Association data breach hits 1.4 million members. Thursday night, the ABA began notifying members that a hacker was detected on its network on March 17, 2023, and may have gained access to members' login credentials for a legacy member system decommissioned in 2018. On March 17, 2023, the ABA observed unusual activity on its network. The incident response plan was immediately activated. Response and security experts were retained to assist with the investigation. The ABA recommends that members change their passwords on the site and any other sites utilizing the same credentials. Read more at bleepingcomputer.com. Seagate fined $300 million for selling hard disk drives to blacklisted Huawei. U.S. computer storage giant Seagate has been fined $300 million for shipping over 7 million hard disk drives to Huawei despite a Commerce Department ban prohibiting exports to the Chinese tech company. Seagate said the deal was in the best interest of the firm and its shareholders. The company noted it will pay off the $300 million fine in $15 million chunks every quarter for the next five years. It seems that profit is really all that matters. Read more at gizmodo.com. Atari acquires the rights to over 100 PC and console classics. Atari is really gunning for a comeback with a multi-year effort to transform the company and investments in IPs people care about. Reimaging versions of Asteroids and Missile Command are reportedly in the works. Just last month, Atari put through deals for Night Drive Studios and the IPs of 12 Stern Electronics arcade classics, including Berserk and Frenzy. With its latest purchase, Atari says it will release already existing games on modern consoles and create new adaptations of past storylines. 
Read more at Engadget.com. Netflix's new password sharing fees to hit U.S. customers by summer. After testing account sharing fees in Latin America last year, Netflix implemented its new policy in February in four regions, including Canada and Spain. Now, for many subscribers in the U.S., it's the moment they have not been waiting for. Password sharing fees are officially rolling out in the second quarter, which would be by the end of June. In Canada, where account sharing fees have rolled out, Netflix says its paid subscriber base is larger than prior to the launch of paid sharing. Time and actual customer reactions will tell. Read more at CNET.com. Another zero-day vulnerability is plaguing Chrome. Google Chrome has been having a rough week. Google just released a patch for the second zero-day exploit in the last week. This one is apparently being actively exploited online, so you should update Chrome immediately to protect yourself. As you might imagine, it's quite a severe issue. While we're not aware of how it's being exploited in the wild, Google is aware of at least one exploit going around. As such, you should still update Chrome as soon as you can in order to ensure your online experience is as secure as it can possibly be. Those on Windows and Mac can get the update right now, while it might take a while to roll out to other platforms, including Linux. Read more on HowToGeek.com. Amazon launches program to identify and track counterfeiters. Amazon has launched its Anti-Counterfeiting Exchange, an initiative to help retail stores label and track marketplace counterfeits as part of the e-commerce giant's efforts to crack down on organized crime on its platform. The company announced on Thursday, we think it is critical to share information about confirmed counterfeiters to help the entire industry stop these criminals earlier, Dharmesh Mehta, Amazon's vice president of selling partner services, said in a statement. Read more at financeyahoo.com. This week's must-see on my YouTube channel. From daily routines to monthly rituals, here's to your cyber health. To learn all the information you need for a successful cyber spring cleaning, please watch my video on that topic at the link listed. Did you know the annual number of worldwide shark bites is 10 times less than the number of people bitten by other people in New York? In 1907, an ad campaign for Kellogg's Corn Flakes offered a free sample of cereal to any woman who would wink at her grocer. Ada Lovelace, poet Lord Byron's daughter, wrote the first algorithm created specifically for a machine. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest, thanks to Benjamin Franklin. I just thought you might want to know. That wraps up my security news roundup for this week. Stay safe, stay secure, and God willing, I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bob. Um, Sorry for the delay. No problem. No problem. All right. Um, I wanted to um, sort of just give you a history of the next topic we're going to talk about today, and that is, of course, um, transcribing with word now you, you everyone knows that um i want to talk a little bit about ray's segment that he does everyone knows that what uh, ray does is he he um he talks about his written part and then he plays a video of the music so when he sends me that he sends it to me in a document form so when i do the newsletter on tuesday i just can insert that in the document but of course, he had two weeks ago, he had his cataract done. And he sent me, of course, the video file. He did it all perfectly. And, and I played that while he was having his surgery. Well, when it came time to do the newsletter on Tuesday, that didn't work out very well because it's not a it's not a Word document. It's a video file, an MP4 file. And how do you put an MP4 file into a 
into a newsletter. And that became a big problem. But Huey taught me a trick two years ago, about a year and a half ago. He taught me this feature, and you can actually transcribe a video file in, in Word. Now, uh, and I thought it was, uh, and I used that, and I transcribed it and put it in the newsletter, and it took me only a few few seconds to do that. So it works out very well, and I thought it, it was worthwhile just re, um, replaying this video for you. Also, things have changed, and it used to be that this process only occurred with Word online, but is now present any, any current version of Word that you have, if you have or Office 365 and you have it on your PC, you can do this. Now, it not only would work well if, if you had to do something like I just described, but also sometimes I'm watching a lot of technical videos on YouTube, like stuff that's really complicated and I have to keep playing it over and over again so it's much easier. I just transcribe it. I just I just download it, transcribe it, and it's it's there for me in a document format. So this is I thought this is a great trick that you should uh, we should just talk about one more time. So let me play the video, and we'll um, we'll then talk about this later. Hi, I'm Huey Poplock. Last week on Tech for Seniors, I talked about dictating to a Google Doc and how to do it. Today I want to talk about using Microsoft Office Online, particularly using Word, and I'm going to go a little I'm going to go a step farther than dictating but I am going to show you how you can dictate using the Microsoft Office Word and then I'm going to show you something that's brand new in Word in the paid or premium version of Microsoft Office so let's go to Microsoft Office and I'm going to open up Word I'm going to create a blank document you'll see that it this is all online I have, even though I do have Word installed on my computer, this is using the online version. Now, if you have a free online version, you can do what I'm going to be showing you for this part. The next part will only be for the paid subscribers. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up where the microphone is, and notice it says Dictate. Under Dictate, I have two choices, Dictate and Transcribed. For this first part, we're going to just talk about Dictate. I'm just going to show you how easy it is with Microsoft Word to do the same thing that I talked about last week, New Paragraph. Locast is a U.S. nonprofit streaming television service that allows users to view live streams of over-the-air television stations, period. These signals are sourced from antennas in each market it serves. All you have to do is sign up online, provide your name and email address, and certify that you live in and are logging on from one of the select U.S. cities known as designated market area period new paragraph and we stop the recording or we stop the uh, uh, dictation so this is what we showed you what i showed you last week but so it's capable of doing much the same thing and it does a very good job of it by the way this is part of an article from one of my blogs from huey.net but what I want to show you is we're going to open up a new document. We'll do a new blank document. And this time in Word, what we're going to do is instead of dictate, we're going to transcribe. And what transcribe means is that we're able to either upload an audio or start dictating, which would basically be what we were just doing. But we're going to upload an audio file. What I did is I took uh, two minutes of discussion 
from one of my Windows Special Interest Group meetings. Uh, in the actually, it wasn't during the meeting; it was before the meeting, where we just were talking back and forth. And I took a two-minute section out of that, and I am going to upload that. And this is the clip I'm going to upload. It's two minutes long. It's 10 megabytes. It's actually a minute and 43 seconds. And we're going to say open it and open it. Now I'm going to leave the, the recording going here and just be talking to show you real time how long a two minute uh, hour, and, I'm sorry, a minute and 43 seconds it takes to do the transcribing. And then I'm going to show you what you can do with that transcribing. What we're doing is we're taking an audio and visual file. It's an MP4. It actually has pictures to it and I'll show it to you uh, when we're done with this just so you see what's going on. Probably should have done, uh, uh, did that before but it's taking that and it's transcribing it. What it's doing, it's doing the dictation that we did doing from a recording directly into Word. And you'll see how it does it and, how, and some things that you can do with it in that transcription. So it's about 75, a little over three quarters done. It'll be done here in just a few more seconds. Again, the reason I'm, I'm not cutting this, I wanted you to see in real time how long this takes, which isn't very long considering, uh, uh, you know, it's an hour, uh, a minute and 43 seconds. If you've got a real long file, you're going to go out and get a cup of coffee and come back. So it's not quick, but there we go. And there you can see on the right is our transcription. It's still not in our document. You'll see at the bottom it says add all to document, or you can do a new transcription. Let me go ahead and play part of this for you so you can see what it's what it's doing. Now Ron, Ron is going to bail on me today, and he's going to see the... Uh the propeller heads, the geeks on tour. Uh -huh. So I'm Canadian. Who act, who asked about the Canadians? That was Bob G. We've got. I think it was Bob G. Uh, no, no. Okay. Well, we have uh, uh, my co-host for the. Okay, so you can see that it, it goes back and forth. Uh, uh, in most cases, it recognizes it was a different speaker. Uh, it didn't pick up Bob G's, uh, it picked his, it didn't pick up what he said, but you see there's, it says speaker one, speaker two. Now what I can do is I know speaker one is me, so I can go like this and say speaker one, highlight it, and then change that to Huey, and you'll see down here, there's a box here first, I want to change all of speaker one, wherever it says speaker one, that's me, so I want to go ahead and click on that, change all of them, and then click this. Bingo. So every one of those that said speaker one is Huey. Now I know that speaker two is Nancy. So I'm going to change that to Nancy and click on this and click OK or confirm. It's now changed any time that Nancy spoke, it put Nancy's name. Speaker three was Stan. So I'm going to change that to Stan. Again, change all speaker three to Stan. Go ahead, click the check mark, confirm. And now all of them are changed. Now, Stan said something here where he said, let's see what he says here. Let's see if I can, I can, I can pick it up from here. Or I, I haven't figured out exactly how to get it. Post for the Tech for Seniors is in go. Vancouver. And so... Okay. We are well represented with Canadians on that show, and some of them come into this show, that show, and well, some me, of them, some of them come into this show as. Let me back that up. Into this show as well. Uh, my co-host for the Tech for Seniors is in Vancouver, and so okay. we are well represented with Canadians on that show, and some of them come into this show as well, into this meeting. Okay, so I'm I'm Nancy. I'm from Sanford, Florida, but I've been here. I became a citizen in 1980, so I'm naturalized. And Stan said, I didn't know that, and it picked it up as Walmart. So we can just go ahead and say, I. And we say, OK. So it changed the text. Now I can say, add all to, to the document. 
and there's my transcription. I don't have to save it because it's uh, Word Online. There is a way, but you'll notice at the beginning it also put the transcription in there or the actual file or told me where the file is. And uh, let me just show you very quickly. Now, Ron, Ron is going to bail on me today, and he's going to see the uh, the propeller heads, the geeks on tour. Uh -huh. So I'm Canadian. Who act, who asked about the Canadians? That was Bob G. So you see that that's what I took it from. You'll see that the article is here. The transcription is done. Did a nice job. I'm able to change it very quickly so you see what I said. And we have a transcription of everything that we have said from a recording from a Zoom meeting. So another piece of what you can do with your computer that you probably haven't been doing. And again, this is using the paid version of Word online. And I pay $99 for, I think it's six licenses that I can give to anyone who I want for uh, a, each year. So it's $100 a year by six. It's less than $20 a person per year. So, uh, and you can buy a single license, I believe it's for like 70, 69 or $79 for the year. So uh, you can have this service uh, for that amount. I have another, I'm working another presentation that will be using the free version of Microsoft Office Online. It will not have the capability to, to do the transcribing, but it will have the ability to do the dictation. Here are a few notes that I'd like to add to this presentation. Transcribe in Word is available today in Word for the web for all Microsoft 365 subscribers and is supported in the new Microsoft Edge or Chrome browsers. With Transcribe, you are completely unlimited into how much you can record and transcribe within Word for the web. Remember, we talked about or I mentioned that you had the choice of either recording or uploading. This is in the recording portion. Currently, there is a five-hour limit per month for uploaded recordings, and each uploaded recording is limited to 200 megabytes. So you want to use the audio portion of a Zoom meeting and not the video and audio uh, file. Transcribe and Office Mobile will be coming by the end of the year. Currently, transcribing audio into English is the only language supported, but they are working on support for more languages. The recording is linked at the top of the document, if you remember, and it is linked to a copy that is stored, that it stores on your OneDrive. So that's it for transcribing with my... Yeah, and just uh, something else I discovered that uh, that I didn't say in the video is where the time is next to what is showing that's is transcribed. If you click that time, it'll play that part of the transcription, uh, the audio portion. And the other thing, Huey, you didn't mention was that it um, you don't have to put the speakers in. There's an option there. If you don't want the speakers, you don't have to, and it just dumps it all into the Word document. Yes. So if you are doing if you're doing it like I mentioned, the technical article. You wouldn't want to, you don't need to know who's saying what, you just want the information. So you can just leave it as a whole. All right, we'll probably have some more questions about that in the Q&A. <clears throat> let's, um, let's move ahead now. And I want to play um, <clears throat> Supercharging Your Gmail. blog post and away we go. So the second feature is called easy email reply. Let's have a look. So the next feature I'd like to show you is easy email reply. Now if you look at the email ahead of you here you'll see um, 
The title is AI in Gmail, and this is from my imaginary friend, Beamer Brown. It says, Ron, do you have any experience using AI with Gmail? Now, if you look at the bottom, you'll see Gmail's automatic answers to reply, and they will be on the bottom here. No, I don't. No, why? No, I haven't. So if you click any of these three, and these would be the standard three that you would see in your Gmail, these are the automatic replies that you can choose. But these, of course, are very short, not very um, friendly. Let me just show you the ones that Compose AI will give you. Now watch carefully. This is the Compose AI uh, symbol. I can say yes I do, I can say no, or I can just say thanks. I'm of course, I'm gonna say yes I do. So if I say yes, watch what AI does. I'm gonna say yes. So it has created an email for me saying, hi Beamer, yes I do have some experience with AI with Gmail. Let me know if you have any specific questions or concerns about it. A much friendlier and informative response. But of course, I'm not going to leave it there. I have, um, I have of course, responded to his, uh, his question, but I'm going to show him a little bit about my knowledge. So let's, let's, uh, let's just add another paragraph here. Remember, I'm going to do the two forward slashes. So I've opened up Compose AI, and I'm going to write a paragraph about using AI with Gmail. Might as well show a little bit of my knowledge here. So we'll hit enter. And now we've added this. Artificial intelligence has become an essential part of modern communication tools such as Gmail. Gmail users benefit from a number and so on and so forth. And I've now added a, uh, another paragraph here about, uh, about using AI with Gmail. And again, I've responded quickly to his concerns. I have uh, demonstrated some of my knowledge and we'll be able just to hit the send button and send that to Beamer. All right, the third feature of Compose AI is called Compose Email. Let's have a look. All right, for the next feature, I'd like to show you Compose AI. As we come down, you'll notice that this is a new email I'm going to send. Now, to open the Compose AI menu, what we're going to do is come down to the right, way down here to the right, and you'll see a little blue dot here. We're going to click this, and we're going to open Compose AI. So here we are, and I'm going to respond to an email that I just have. So I'm going to ask Compose AI to send an email to Beamer to have a meeting to discuss training with Gmail and AI. Let's see what uh, Compose AI writes for an email for me. So now we have a number of choices um, of, about creating an email. Uh, we're going to have a meeting to discuss Gmail and AI training next week. Please let me know if you're available. I wanted to let you know that we'll be having a meeting next week to discuss uh, so on and so forth. So you have a whole bunch of suggestions or you can load more suggestions uh, for this. And again, it's responding to, a, um, to creating an email. And this is being artificial intelligence, can respond to various topics you would have in uh, email correspondence. So the fourth feature in Compose AI is autocomplete. Let me show you how that's done. So the next feature I'd like to demonstrate is autocomplete. Uh, let's say I'm writing a letter back to my imaginary friend, Beamer Brown, and I'm going to talk to him about AI Gmail. So I'm going to start uh, typing, I am, so, so you'll see right away it's starting to autocomplete. I'm writing um, this email to discuss, and again, you'll see that as we come along, and you can, of course, by hitting Alt-2, Alt-3, you can select the phrases that you want quickly just by clicking that, or you can use the, again, Alt, 
Alt 2, Alt 3, they're all Alt, um, Alt Tab. So I've saved the best for the last. Compose AI rephrase is my favorite feature. Let me show you how this works. So the last feature I'd like to show you is the rephrase feature. And I'm so excited because this is probably one of my favorite out of the five. So let's come back to our email that I sent to Beamer. Remember I said, yes, I do have some experience using AI with Gmail. I wrote this and I think it's just not quite me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. And that opens another menu down below here. And if you look carefully, the first one is, um, is a friendly tone. The second one is a formal tone. The third option is to expand, shorten, and rephrase. So let me just, I want this to be more friendly. So watch what happens when I click here. And this will now list that that sentence in more friendly friendly terminology. So let's have a look at some of them. Oh, I actually do have some experience with AI and Gmail. Feel free to ask me any questions or let me know if there's anything I can do. Or let's take another one down here. I do have some experience with AI and Gmail. Don't hesitate to ask me any questions or share your experience. Okay, so now let's come back and do the formal. So when we click this button here, this is more formal. I can confidently assert that I possess a certain level of expertise in the implementation of AI in concert with Gmail. Oh, wow. That makes me sound really good, doesn't it? So that's formal. Or suppose I just don't like this sentence. Let's rephrase it. So let's click the bottom here and let's rephrase this. So now it says, uh, this is rephrased, affirmative. I've got some prior knowledge operating I with Gmail. If you have any questions or queries, please let me know. So that's different than the original one. This is such a powerful feature and one I use all the time. So in this video, I've shown you how Compose AI will help you be more efficient with Gmail. There are five features which you should be using. The first is Compose Anything, where there are templates arranged for you. The second is Autocomplete, where you can complete a sentence or a paragraph quickly. The third is Easy Email Reply, in which it will auto-reply for you in a more customizable form. The other is Compose Email, where it will actually compose an email for you, depending on the question you pose, and then rephrase sentences my favorite, where it will change the reply based on your tone. So these are five features why I feel you should be using Compose AI. Now let's look at if this is free or is there a cost to this. So this is the pricing of Compose AI. If we look at the top, you'll see there's three tiers. There is, of course, the free and basic tier, which I have and am using. You have the premium tier, which is $120 a year or roughly $10 a month. Or you have the ultimate version tier, which is $360 a year or about $30 a month. So let's look at the features. So I'm going to stop it there. <clears throat> you can... Um... You can watch the video, I put the link in there and you can watch the whole, the end part and it describes all the features and what's the paid and free. But I wanted to get on Huey to yours. So you, uh, Huey has a segment now and uh, take it away, Huey. Unmute yourself. Yeah, that helps, doesn't it? Uh, this is the first part of, uh, uh, of a series that I'm going to be doing. Let me go ahead and find it now of course it's not where it's supposed to be don't feel bad tech for seniors presents using ai in 2023 i'm huey poplock 
This will be the first of several presentations to demonstrate various tools and apps that are available to you and to me for free to create using AI. First, the history of AI. The history of artificial intelligence dates back to ancient times with the Greeks and Egyptians exploring the concepts of automata. However, it wasn't until the mid-20th century that the field of AI truly began to take shape. Early pioneers like John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky laid the groundwork for modern AI, which has since evolved to include machine learning, natural language processing, and computer vision. Today, AI is used in a wide range of industries from healthcare and finance to transportation and entertainment. As the technology continues to advance, experts predict that AI will play an increasingly important role in shaping our world. AI in the 2000s. The turn of the millennium brought with it a renewed interest in artificial intelligence as advancements in computing power and data collection made new applications possible. One major development was the rise of machine learning algorithms which allowed computers to analyze vast amounts of data and learn from it over time. This led to the breakthrough in areas like natural language processing and image recognition, paving the way for virtual assistants and self-driving cars. Another key trend in AI during the 2000s was the emergence of big data analytics. With more data being generated than ever before, companies began using AI tools to sift through this information and extract valuable insights. This has had a major impact on industries ranging from finance to healthcare as organizations can now make more informed decisions based on real-time data analysis. AI since November 2022. In the years since 2022 November, artificial intelligence has continued to evolve at an astonishing pace. One major development has been the increased use of AI in healthcare, where it's being used to diagnose and treat diseases with greater accuracy than ever before. Another key trend has been the rise of autonomous vehicles, which are now being tested on roads around the world. One area where AI has made significant strides in recent years is natural language processing. Thanks to advances in machine learning algorithms, computers can now understand and respond to human speech with remarkable accuracy. This had led to the creation of virtual assistants like Siri and Miss A, which are becoming increasingly integrated into our daily lives. AI and Open AI. Artificial intelligence has been advancing rapidly since November of 2022, and one of the most exciting developments in this field is the emergence of Open AI. What started out as a nonprofit research organization was founded with the goal of creating safe and beneficial AI that can be used to solve some of humanity's biggest challenges. The team at OpenAI is working on a wide range of projects from natural language processing to robotics and much more. One of the key benefits of OpenAI is that it is open source, which means that anyone can access its code and use it for their own projects. This democratization of AI technology has the potential to revolutionize many industries from healthcare to finance and beyond. As the field of AI continues to evolve, it is likely that open AI will play an increasingly important role in shaping in the future of this exciting field. Using AI to explain tools available for AI.
Artificial intelligence is a rapidly evolving field, and there are many tools available that can help individuals and organizations leverage this technology. However, with so many different options to choose from, it can be difficult to know where to start. This is where AI can come in handy. By using AI algorithms to analyze data and identify patterns, it is possible to gain insights into which tools are most effective for different use cases. One of the key benefits of using AI to explore different tools is that it can help to save time and resources. Rather than manually sifting through vast amounts of information, AI can quickly identify the most relevant tools and provide detailed explanations of how they work. This can be especially useful for startups or small businesses that may not have the resources to hire dedicated AI experts. The tools I use today. During this presentation on AI in 2023, I utilized two powerful tools to help me convey my message effectively. The first tool was Tome.app, which is a fantastic platform for creating and sharing interactive content. With its intuitive interface and robust feature set, Tome.app made it easy for me to create engaging visuals and animations that help to illustrate key concepts and ideas. The second tool that I used today was there's an AI for that.com, which is an AI powered platform that helps individuals and organizations to identify the best tools and technologies for their specific needs. By leveraging the power of machine learning algorithms, this platform can quickly analyze large amounts of data and provide actionable insights that can help businesses and individuals to make more informed decisions about which tools to use. This is There's an AI for That website. It says there are 3,556 AIs for 989 tasks. Just while I've been looking at the website, preparing to record this portion of it, it jumped up three. In the last two days, it's gone up 90 AIs available and 25 tasks. This is updated daily. Let's take a look at what you can see here, and then we'll take a look at Tome, the other website that I use to produce this presentation. With There's an AI for that. You'll notice on the right-hand side, you pr probably is difficult to see because of the dark background. By years until a year ago. And then it last May by month up to April and then now. So it's going to be the most recent. And the center area is just launched and it shows several of the most recent AIs that were released and were made known to this website. On the left are featured AI tools and websites and you can click on any of those. Let's take a look what it shows us. Uh, let's look for Tome just by doing a search for it. That's not how I found it originally. I did some search terms and came across it. But here is Tome. So you could choose any of these, but let's take Tome because that's the one we used. And as we look at it, it tells us it's a generative storytelling has arrived and then you can visit the website and we'll do that in just a moment you can also click on over here to visit the website it gives a little background of what it is it's the 127th most recent and it's in the writing category you can share this on twitter you can share it on facebook you can save it so when you come back to this website it is one of those that you have saved. If we scroll down further, there's 162 alternatives to Tome for writing. And so you could look at any of these if Tome didn't fit your purpose or you didn't like the way it worked or it wasn't working properly, you can go and find several other 
AI apps and tools to try to see if it will fit what you want to do. As you can see, there's a lot of information here, and we'll come back up. But let's take a look at the website. Meet Tome, your AI storytelling partner. And you can sign in if you have an account, which I created for free, or you can just try Tome. When you click Try Tome, because I've already created an account and went right to my account. And then you can work with it from here. I'm not going to go into more detail, except this is the program that I use to produce this particular presentation. This has been Tech for Seniors Using AI in 2023. I'm Huey Poplock. Stay tuned for more in this series. Except for my voice, that was totally AI uh, generated. That's, uh, that's really good. And then I'll be doing more presentations on the several of the different uh, apps that I have tried and played with and uh, either use or have discarded. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to um, raise, uh, raise, uh, raise segment. Uh, I'll come down here. Okay, good morning, Tech for Seniors. Right about now, I'm having my cataract surgery on my Ron, left eye, so off hopefully YouTube. when I'm back next week, I'll be able to... Sorry? YouTube. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, I forgot to uh, mention, uh, if you're over on YouTube, thanks for coming, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Bob. Let's we'll see everybody really nice and clear. But today I'm going to discuss Johnny Ray, a music icon before rock and roll. Johnny Ray, born John Alvin Ray, was an American singer and songwriter who gained immense popularity in the 1950s. Known for his powerful and emotive performances, Ray's music style was a blend of pop, jazz, and R&B, which helped him carve out a niche for himself in the industry. Ray was born on January 10, 1927 in Dallas, Oregon, to parents of Irish, Scottish, and Native American ancestry. His early years were marked by tragedy as he lost his father at a young age and suffered from a severe hearing impairment, which led him to develop a distinctive vocal style. Despite his hearing problems, Ray began his music career in the late 40s and soon became a sought after performer. Now in 1951, Ray released his first hit single, Cry, which went on to become a massive success, selling over 2 million copies and reaching the top of the charts in the U.S. and the U.K. The Ron, song's still emotional on lyrics and What's Ray's heart-wrenching performance. We were still on YouTube.